In this video, we're going to take a look at finding parametric equations. Before we take a look at finding parametric equations for given rectangular equations, I want us to look at the graph of the following two sets of parametric equations using our TI-84. So the first thing you should do is we know that our calculator has certain modes. So if you click mode, as you can see, I have clicked on parametric. Typically, your calculator is on function mode, so it's going to be y1, y2 when you click y equals. When you change it to parametric mode, and then you click on the y equals button, notice that it gives me the option to now plug in an equation for x and an equation for y. Now, I've done this ahead of time for these two sets of functions so that I didn't have to plug them in as we were talking. Um, but for the first one, I'm going to go ahead and select that to graph. And I want you to take a look at that graph. There's nothing super exciting about this graph, and of course I could turn this into a rectangular equation. Um, but let's now take a look at the second set of functions. So I'm just going to select that second set of functions as well and graph again. And we can see this is exactly the same parametric equation. It's the same equation. So it's the it's a different set of parametric equations, but it's the same solution in rectangular form. So it's important to know that because as we are looking at finding parametric equations, there are infinitely many correct solutions. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Knowing that there are multiple correct answers, when we are asked to find a set of parametric equations, or in this case, two sets of parametric equations, all we need to do is make sure that we are keeping this relationship clear and correct. So for instance, say my first set is that I'm going to let x equal t, and most of the time, that is going to be a very good solution, is to have your first set be that x is equal to t. You can get as crazy as you want, of course, but let's just make things easy. If x were equal to t, so that's one of my parametric equations, then y would have to be equal to 4 divided by t minus 1. So now these are both equations written in terms of t. So now I need a second set. And again, there's no right answer. What if I let x equal t squared? Well, then y would have to be equal to 4 divided by t squared minus 1. So that's a second set that is also correct. What if I let x equal t plus 1? Then y would have to be equal to 4 divided by t plus 1 minus 1, which would mean y is equal to 4 divided by t, and that is another correct solution. So again, it's all about that relationship set by the rectangular equation. So let's take this one step further. This is still a rectangular equation. I'm still to find a set of parametric equations, and instead of just a rectangular equation, they've also given me a condition. And that condition says when t is negative 1, the point is negative 2, negative 7. So really all that means is if I were to make my little table, when t is negative 1, x is negative 2, y is negative 7. So I can make up some value or some relationship based on the fact that when t is negative 1, x is negative 2. So I could say x is equal to t minus 1. That's one way I could do it. And again, there's infinitely many correct ways to do this. So this is one correct way. If I let x equal t minus 1, which retains this relationship, then y is going to be based on the rectangular equation. So y is going to be 4 times x, which is now t minus 1, plus 1. So y is 4t minus 4 plus 1. Whoops, not t, plus 1. So y is equal to 4t minus 3. So my set of parametric equations is x is equal to t minus 1, 
and y is equal to 14 minus 3. Let's do just one more example, and this one's fun because most of the time when we get something like this, and as I said before, we would just say, all right, let's let x equal t. That'd be really easy. Therefore, y would be 2 minus t squared done and done, which would be cool except for this issue right here. X is going from 2 to 0, and t is a measurement of time. So do I want time to go from 2 to 0? Well, no, that wouldn't make any sense to do it that way. So I'm still going to make up whatever I want, but I really want t to be increasing because t is time and time increases, as we know. So instead of writing x equal t, I'm going to make it so that t is increasing. So what if I let x instead be 2 minus t? Now what would that accomplish? Well then, if I plug in 0 for t, then x is 2, and that's good. And if I plug in 2 for t, then x is 0, and that's good. So that's going to give me, it's basically going to solve my problems. So if x is equal to 2 minus t, then I have to solve for y. y is 2 minus 2 minus t quantity squared. So of course that's just algebra and we're really good at algebra. So if I'm squaring this, I'm going to get 4 minus 4t plus t squared, but I'm subtracting all of that. So that's going to give me negative t squared and then positive 4t and then this is a minus 4 and a plus 2, so that's minus 2. So my set of parametric equations is right here, and that is for 0 is less than t is less than 2. Up next, we're going to take a look at slope and tangent lines and concavity and all of the things we know about calculus, and we're going to apply it to parametric equations.